All right, today I'm going to show you a couple things I use that uh, from welding from thin body panels to, uh, you know, thick, you know, materials, uh, structural material and things like that. This was actually, I believe, a chunk of an I-beam that I cut off and it was all rusted. You can see I cleaned a little bit off. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, in order to switch my machine, because it's not digital, so I actually mark on it, and even if it were digital, I'd probably write my uh, my settings on there. And uh, I use these, I believe they're an alcohol-based marker, an alcohol-based marker. But, uh, a brand new one, I don't need to use that guy, we'll use an old one here. We'll put a mark in real time here, so we'll let it dry. Now it says fast drying and things like that. But I will mark on my machines, I made it black here, they come in different colors. So I'll mark on my machines where my settings are. Now I'm running an ER70S uh, MIG wire, I'm running a CO2 gas, so you should see more splatter than normal. But this is a pretty decent wire, and especially for the price. I'll link it in the description below. So I hope you enjoy, you know, trying this wire. Uh, I recommend giving it a shot. Now when it comes time to cleaning off material and things like that, I run the scotch bright discs so I'll link those in the description everything will be linked in down below you can see it takes off the minimal um, material and everything easily it takes off all the rust and all make sure you're wearing a mask when you're doing this kind of stuff because uh, probably not good for the old lungs okay um, this is where I was just probably showing my kid hey look at you can weld right to rust you know with the MIG and everything just depends on how you do it I guess but uh, you can see it goes very very minimal and I'm gonna weld that up for you so we gotta actually I'll grind some more off of here um, when it comes time to grinding and things and actually the scotch brake disc here one more thing they come in different different forms so you can you know get the shaft style so you can uh, use it on its edge or even use the sides there they also come in itty bitty one inch uh, twist locks so I use these very often when it comes time to doing my little projects and things. It helps me do the detailing and all that fine stuff. Uh, and the fiber disc in order. So you got your rough grit. It's going to be your brown color. And I believe, you guys can correct me in the comments below, but I believe the red is the medium. And then uh, majority of the time, 99% of the time, I'm running these fine ones. You'll see them. Uh, it's connected right there too again right now um, now when it comes time to using these on uh, you can actually you can actually see it here because I was cleaning it up <clears throat> and I shouldn't have but uh, you can see when you use these thin thin ones you can take it off and everything and you have to just sit there longer with it now granted it doesn't uh, doesn't destroy any any of the material it does really good at uh, not not doing that it'll also clog up as you can see um, it'll clog up and it'll go the waste and everything else like that it actually de deteriorates it faster so I recommend going to the old scotch right an old one I almost took my thumb off You can see it uh, takes it off relatively easy without having to do any damage to it. In fact, I'll hit this spot right here that I hit with the skinny wheel. And you can see the skinny wheel marks are still there. So it does not do uh, a whole lot of damage. And even when you bump your thumb, it just kind of you know, helps you out a little, makes you tougher. So uh, now put this down and that's a 1764 hole uh, bits right here uh, well, it was a 1764 so I must have grinded on it we gonna make it again ain't we but I use a step bit and uh, there you go uh, 1764 I'm not lying 
and then I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna step up quite a bit. Uh, it's two steps up on the on the old uh, step bit here. I don't even say the size on me, and it's supposed to be a nice one too. Huh. L I B, but uh, you can see we're quite a ways up there. So I'm gonna challenge myself. See how I do. <clears throat> and again, I'm running an 035. I wish I was running, you know, a smaller wire. But uh, I'm going to work with what I got and show you what I can do with that. Now, when it comes to grinding and things like that, there are two types of discs. There's a Type 27 and uh, a T29. I'm sure there's multiple types of discs. But uh, <laughs> when it comes time, the ones I use, rather, I should say. Let me grab a new one here. So you get a good comparison. The T27 will have a nice flat surface on the uh, back of it and on the, on the face. And the T29 will have a concave look to it. So you can actually see the difference there. Now when you want to take off a lot of material, you're going to want to use a concave one like this. Now granted this is a 40 grit because when it comes time I want to remove product. I'm removing some serious product with the T2940 grit. So when I want to make nice even uh, grind grindings and things like that, smooth surfaces, I go with the T27. And again, this is a 60 grit, so it'll even come out a smoother finish on that. So those are the types of discs that I primarily use when it comes to welding and things. Now the copper plating, I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to show you. We clean this thing off. I use it so uh, I, religiously. It's been cut apart. Um, it started out life as a lot, a lot, lot bigger. And uh, over the years, we've cut pieces off of it here and there and uh, everywhere. So um, my brother has some pieces. I have some pieces. <laughs> uh, they're all floating everywhere. But we use the copper quite often um, when it comes to things like this. So, I got the machine set up for a lower setting, and uh, we'll see how good we can fill these holes in. Now, that paint marker should be dry by now. So, I'm just going to take a uh, little bit of rubbing alcohol. Oops. I'm not, so I'm not lying to y'all. A little bit of rubbing alcohol. And that's it. Just, it wipes right off. So... That's why I use the uh, alcohol markers and everything and to write on my projects because it just comes off so much easier than a lot of other things. Um, Sharpies work great, of course, but uh, these are kind of a paint marker. So give those a shot and uh, let me know what you think. Now, let's get back to uh, filling some holes. When it comes time to welding on the copper, you don't necessarily want to put the heat to the material we're going to put it right into the dead center of this thing or even close to the edge of this and uh, it's going to fill in this hole so don't try to don't try to weld to your surface itself we'll get that hole filled kind of looks like a monkey One's bent this way, one's bent that way. There we go. Yeah, we're working with it. All right, one. Oh, come on, you little bugger. Oh, I got a gap underneath this, but we'll be okay. All right, no cutting, no editing, and no cheating. Back side, you can see. 
minimizes the warping this way as well when you hit it directly to that copper because you're not putting it to the sheet steel so uh that's why i'm capable of running that 035 with the bigger machine and everything you know my brother has a little buzz box so uh i can't really you know complain with what that is i would love to have a smaller wire like i was saying but push in one hand you know what to do in the other Go ahead and swap this out to a T the T27 had to make sure I grab the right one. Oh, I should have showed you that before I grind it on anything. You can, you can see how smooth the beads are. A lot of people complain that uh and you can see the splatter see look at look at my minimal minimal splatter on there so i did start taking that big fat one down though we ain't gonna lie to you i did start taking that big fatty down but uh you can see it's not too bad so and that's the gap that was underneath that uh coffer there which that's okay because i didn't clamp it to it nothing like that i just wanted to show you guys in a real time Okay, anybody that complains about grinding welds, you just got to set your machine right, use the right kind of gas, use the right wire. But uh, I could have took that down a lot more and finished it out. But uh, we'll go with that one for now. Now let's clean this big guy off. And I'll show you. Look, I'll try to make as much splatter as possible. Um, I'll even run the machine a little hotter. I may even pulse it for you guys. Just so I can try to get some good splatter. I'm gonna show you guys a one more trick when it comes to welding on the thicker stuff. I'm gonna minimize the splatter on one side, and on the other side, we'll see if there's any difference. Now, when it comes to uh, anti-splatter and things like that, a lot of people they buy spray. Spray works great, especially in the hard-to-reach areas. But uh, when it comes time, I actually use nozzle gel. Okay, you can use it on your jigs and everything. I'll actually put it all over the table sometimes and then wipe it off so that way nothing sticks to it. Now, I don't want to put it right on where I'm welding the weld surface. Uh, I don't want to put it right on that surface that I'm going to weld to because it could affect the weld. But we'll get it pretty close. You want to do 
you don't need that much on there you can see that's a whole lot you, you really don't need a whole lot on there you can come back and wipe that off show you how very very little you need when it comes to uh, the anti-splatter stuff so just a little tiny bit on there and we'll see if there's any kind of a difference but uh, I don't expect a whole lot make it to where you guys can see it a little better. Try to just make splatter as much as I can. Okay, now the other side. The other side has no. Uh, in fact, we're gonna cool it down a little bit. Now nah, we don't need to cool it down. We're just gonna weld on it. We're gonna we're gonna go for it. We're sending it. It's just a demo. We ain't we ain't paying attention how pretty this weld is. We ain't building rocket ships today. Got out of position there. I should have checked myself, but I wrecked myself. So, not the greatest. It started getting a little hot towards the end because of that uh, other weld there. But uh, you can see very little splatter on this wire. And we are running carbon dioxide. Okay, we are not running mixed gas. So, uh, no cheating. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. Peace out.